The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this session of your distance learning program with me, Bate Elvis, a your geology teacher. Today we'll continue with lesson 17. And lesson 17 is titled Manifestation and Types of Earthquake Waves. As usual, before we go into the lesson proper, we will try to examine the assignment in the previous lesson. When we ended the previous lesson, our assignment was name a body wave and give it characteristics. Name a body wave and give it characteristics. If you took time off to reflect over the lesson, the last lesson before this one, and you went through it thoroughly or keenly, you will be able to bring out the correct answer to this question. So for those who took time to spend some time to do this assignment, let us see if the answer tie with what we have. In our last lesson we said, there are three principal types of seismic waves. And this principal type of seismic waves include the primary or P waves, the secondary or S waves, and the love or longitudinal wave or love or L waves. Primary waves or P waves, secondary or S waves, then we have love or L waves. We equally noted that these three types of waves have been placed into two major categories. Category one, we have the body waves. Category two, surface waves. Under category one, which we call the body waves, we said they are exemplified by the primary or P waves and the secondary or S waves. So, to answer this question correctly, of giving a type of body wave and its characteristics, the question was simply asking you to give either the characteristics of a primary wave or P waves or the characteristics of a secondary or S waves. So, a typical example of a body wave is the P wave, which has the following characteristics. One, it is a longitudinal wave which causes rocks to move parallel to the direction of the wave propagation. Longitudinal waves which causes rocks to move parallel to direction of wave propagation. Second characteristic of P waves, they are the first to arrive at the recording station. They are the first to arrive at the recording station. Three, P waves can travel through solid, liquid, and gaseous material. These are the characteristics of one example of body waves, which is P waves. Another example of body wave is 
S waves. S wave or secondary waves. What are the characteristics of S wave? S wave are transverse waves that causes materials to move perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. Two, S waves are limited to solids and velocity is a function of the rock. So they do not travel through three types of matter. They travel just through solid. Unlike P waves that travel through solid, liquid, and gaseous material. So if you did this assignment correctly, you were supposed to have said that the first body wave is P wave, which its characteristics, and then S wave, and also give it characteristics. That said and done, I want to believe that you now master very well the concept of body waves and their characteristics. And you can equally differentiate between body waves and S waves. You can equally cite example of body waves and surface waves. <laughs> Today we'll be looking at the manifestations, the types, and earthquake waves part two, with particular focus on the types of earthquake waves. So, as usual, we'll correct our assignment, which we just did. We'll look at what we are expected to take home or to keep as the objective of this lesson the previous knowledge, the real life situation, the learning activities, the application exercise, and then we end our lesson with an assignment. So what are the expected outcomes of this lesson? In the course of this lesson, we are expected to name the major categories of earthquake on the Earth's surface. Give their location in kilometers and situate the types of earthquake waves to the layers of the earth. Previous knowledge, types of, to understand this lesson, we'll record that we did types of lesson in the past lesson, and then we did earthquake waves. So we did types of earthquakes in our previous lesson, which already the idea of earthquakes and their movement is already in our mind, we already know it, and then the movement of waves is already also in our mind. With these two ideas, we can proceed with our lesson to better understand it. What is the real life situation that this lesson wants to answer? The intensity of earthquake records so far by seismologists have not been the same. We also notice the amount of damage equally varies. Why should earthquake in Japan have intensity of 10, earthquake in France, 6, earthquake in Cameroon, 4? Why these discrepancies in the record of these intensities? And why is it that in Haiti, many people die, buildings, people are rendered homeless, maybe in Cameroon, just a bit? or maybe found lands destroyed, or maybe the, the impact is minute. Why this variation? It's what this lesson will be able to help us understand. So, the scientific problem this lesson wants to answer is why do earthquakes vary in different locations? This is due to the variation of the earth material. That could be the reason why there's variation of earthquake intensity. It could be as a result of seismic waves travel with different velocity. They don't have the same velocity, and because they don't have the same velocity, we are bound to experience this variation in their effects. And the earthquakes have different causes and origin. So as we proceed, we are going to see which of these responses is scientifically correct. We will be able, in the course of this lesson, to give the basis for the classification of earthquakes. 
Remember that in classification of living things, we said all living things move. So anything which moves is a living thing. Everything which breathes is a living thing. Everything which reproduces is a living thing. So in this lesson, there are certain criteria which we use to link with or tie up with earthquakes. And there are certain bases that we are going to follow that will enable us to classify the numerous earthquakes that occur in the world. That's the first activity that we're doing, classifying earthquakes on their basis. Two, in the course of this lesson also, we will name the various types of earthquakes with their death and location within the earth cross. Then, we we'll outline the characteristics of the types of earthquakes. Three important activities in this lesson. Now, classification of earthquakes. Earthquakes are classified usually on the following basis. One, we classify earthquake based on the cause of the origin. We classify earthquake based on the depth of the focus. And we can equally classify earthquake based on the intensity and magnitude of that particular earthquake. So therefore, the classification, the basis for the classification of earthquakes include one, the cause of origin of that particular earthquake, two, the depth of focus of that particular earthquake, and the intensity and magnitude of that particular earthquake. Earthquakes. So those are the basis for the classification of earthquakes. Now, based on the depth of focus, there are three types of earthquakes. One, we have shallow focus earthquakes, we have intermediate earthquakes, and we have deep focus earthquakes. Based on depth of focus, there are three types of earthquakes that scientists or seismologists have put forward. Standard. That there are shallow focus earthquakes, there are intermediate focus earthquakes, there are deep focus earthquakes. What therefore are shallow focus earthquakes? Shallow focus earthquakes, based on the depth, are those earthquakes that occur within the range of zero to 70 kilometers deep. Se zero to 70 kilometers. And when we look at, if we can recall when we're studying the internal structure of the head, where we say the head is made up of the cross, the mantle, the core. When we look at the occurrence of these earthquakes, we realize that here we have the cross. We say these are earthquakes that occur at, seven, at this depth of at least 70 kilometers. We are at the cross where we have the oceanic cross and the continental cross. Then we have the upper mantle or the asthenosphere. So these dotted points we find is the, the zone along which the earthquakes occur. So the 70 kilometers is between the upper surface of the earth to around the lithosphere. At most, the asthenosphere. Hence, shallow focus earthquakes tectonically are between the upper crust or the continental crust, oceanic crust, and they end at the upper mantle. So any earthquake that goes beyond the upper mantle cannot be classified as a shallow focus earthquake because the criteria for classifying any earthquake as a shallow focus earthquake 
must be that that earthquake has a depth of 0 to 70. Intermediate focus earthquakes. These are earthquakes that range from 70 to 300 kilometers. And it is, we've seen the oceanic cross, the continental cross, and then we are diving now into the upper mantle. So these are, this is the tectonic setting of intermediate focus earthquake. Any earthquake whose depth of focus is between 70 to 300 is correct to be called an intermediate focus earthquake. When you look at the diagram very well, you see that there's a diagram that is showing the three types of earthquake. So you can now see where the shallow focus are called. You can see here that they are noted with this red writing. And then we have this red writing. We have the intermediates. You see where they are occurring, right down to the upper mantle. And then we have this other one, which are far behind the mantle, far below the mantle. So, so for, for, for our take home is that any earthquake whose depth of focus is between 70 to 300 is an intermediate focus earthquake. The deep focus earthquake, the last category of earthquakes, are those whose depth of focus is from 350 to 700 kilometers. You can see that it is, this is the continental cross. We have the mantle, upper mantle, and then stretching to, right down to the lower mantle. And this zone is where the earthquakes, zone of earthquakes occur. And so earthquakes occurring occur along this line due to frictional movements. So principally, the shallow focus, there are three types of earthquake based on the depth of focus. One, shallow focus from 0 to 70. And then we have intermediate focus from 70 to 300 kilometers. And then finally, we have the deep focus earthquakes from 350 to 700 kilometers. We take the second criteria for classifying earthquakes based on the cause of origin. Based on the cause of origin, we have earthquakes that occur along fault plane. We have those that occur that are caused as a result of volcanic eruptions. We have those that are caused as a result of bomb blasts. This earthquake, the, those earthquakes caused by bomb blasts are sometimes referred to as man-made or artificial earthquakes. How do this result during extractive processes? For example, you go to a quarry where they are extracting hard rocks for different purposes, construction purposes. Those rocks are not easy to be excavated. So we use explosive or dynamite and place within the joints of those rocks and then we blast it off for greater chunks to come out, which can be reduced to the various different types of aggregate. This bombardment releases energy waves which causes any material to respond and it can result to an earthquake. So the last type of earthquake is the earthquake caused by landslide. So based on this criteria, there are four categories of earthquakes. Those that occur around fault plain, those around volcan caused by volcanic eruptions, those by bomb blasts, and then those by landslides. So, 
The diagram tries to explain how movement along four planes, planes can lead to the occurrence of an earthquake. You see that these are, this is the focus. As this movement up and down occurs, seismic waves are generated. Seismic waves are generated. These are the seismic waves. And they are felt on the surface of the earth as an expression of earthquake. So you see the focus here, where movement is actually taken and they have the epicenter. So based on movement along fault planes, earthquake can result. So we look at a problem situation. The intensity of earthquakes record so far by seismologists has not been the same. We also notice that the amount of damage equally varies. What is the scientific problem here? That why do earthquakes vary in different localities? Why do earthquakes vary in different localities? localities. This is due to the variation of the Earth's material. This can't actually be. Seismic waves travel with different velocity, not appropriate. Earthquakes have different causes and origin. Good. The different causes and origin of earthquake is what accounts for the level of damage and the intensity that will be felt on the Earth's surface. It is not based on the velocity of that wave. It is instead based on the different causes and origin. We have seen the different types of earthquakes and their causes. We talked about those caused by bomb blasts, landslides, movement around fault plane, and so. So these movements occur with different velocities. And the gravity, the intensity of the earthquake will depend on its cause and its origin. If an earthquake is between, originate between 70, 0 to 70, rather that it will be very weak. So it will be shallow, the impact will not be too great. But if it's from 350 to 700 kilometers, well, it's coming right deep and it's coming with greater force. So the impact will be greatly felt and at different localities. And the intensity also varies because as the waves are moving, the velocity is reducing. So we should take note of these key points in this lesson. That we classify earthquakes usually on the following basis. The criteria for classifying earthquakes are one, we classify earthquakes on the cause of origin, two, the depth of focus, and three, the intensity and magnitude of the earthquake. That's one. Those are the criteria for classifying earthquakes. Now, when we go to the depth of focus, we have three, using that criteria, we have three types of earthquakes. One, the shallow focus earthquakes, whose depth range from zero to 70 kilometers. We have the intermediate focus earthquakes, whose depth range from 70 to 300 kilometers. And the deep focus earthquake, whose depth range from 300 to 700 kilometers. Now, based on the origin, we have the following types of earthquakes. We have earthquakes that occur along fault planes. We have earthquakes that occur as a result of volcanic eruptions. We have earthquakes that occur as a result of bomb, bomb blasts, which we say they are normally referred to as man-made or artificial earthquakes. And then we have earthquakes that result as a result of landslides. For us to keep these important points 
that we have explained in the course of this lesson, we take this exercise. Our exercise has two questions. Give the criteria for the classification of earthquakes. Give the criteria for the classification of earthquakes to list the major types of earthquakes. List the major types of earthquakes. Remember the question number one is criteria and then question number two is major types. So we have 20 seconds to recall what we have listened in the course of this lesson. When we come back, we look at those who are very keen or who paid attention when the key or important facts were being explained. Okay, let's look at the answer together. Question one. Give the criteria for the classification of earthquakes. Give the criteria for the classification of earthquakes. We said there are three criteria for classifying classifying earthquakes. One, we can classify earthquakes based on the cause of origin. Two, we can classify earthquakes based on the depth of focus. And three, we can classify earthquakes based on the intensity and magnitude of the earthquakes. So those are the three criteria for classifying earthquakes. Cause of origin, depth of focus, and intensity and magnitude of earthquakes. Question two, list the major types of earthquakes. List the major types of earthquakes. The major types of earthquakes include one, shallow focus earthquake, which are earthquakes between 0 to 70 kilometers. Two, intermediate focus earthquakes, which occur around the range of 70 to 300 kilometers. And finally, last but not the least, deep focus earthquakes, which range around 350 to 700 kilometers deep down there within the earth. Assignment. Locate the main regions of the world where earthquakes often occur. Locate the main regions of the world where earthquakes often occur. Why do the following countries always suffer from the devastating effect of earthquakes? To help you so that you go home, you don't have a lot of doubt. Question one is simply saying that you can locate these regions of the world based on a sheet of paper that has the world map. So bring out the main regions of earthquake on that world map. And then two, there are some countries that those of you who are always, who are abreast with recent happenings in the world, we always hear them in the news, earthquake has occurred in Japan, earthquake has occurred in Indonesia, Philippines. Why do these countries always suffer the devastating effect of earthquakes? So we have explained it in the course of this lesson. So in the next class, we want to see those who we're following so that they'll bring it and we correct together. For those who want to read further, we have our references. One that you should, you can read Ordinary Level Geology for Forms 4 and 5 Science. The second edition published by 
Grassroots Publishers, and it's written by Kenneth Usimbom in 2021. You could also read Fundamentals of Geology by APA and others. And you have Witten DJA Brooks JRV 1972, the Penguin Dictionary of Geology. And you have Eric W. Danielson and Edward J. Dengnecke, JR 1986, in Earth Science. We have come to the end of our lesson 17. Our next lesson will be on method of evaluating earthquake intensity and magnitude. Unna tege si ma tege yob, unna tege minga ma tege nyum, unna tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, esa kina bia dinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen 